championships. Uh, and actually, a year ago, I thought if I get to the top 20, I'll be so happy and that I can quit maybe tennis. But now, I don't think I will. <laughs> and I want to drive safely because Welcome to Munich. Only the winners of, of tier one tournaments and uh, of Grand Slams get sweets. And the rest of us mortals get rooms. <laughs> but nice ones. Very luxurious. I just hope I sleep at least 10 hours. That's my wish. And Lubo will open my suitcase and put everything into place. <laughs> it's already open. <laughs> Good night. who is the new number one in the world. Even if you don't do very well, just the fact that you're here is good, very good. But uh, I really want to do well. I really want to play well and, and do the things I am working on. So I hope I manage. In Munich, the money and the stakes are extremely high. Maggie Maleva and Jennifer Capriati joined the tour together as juniors. They used to be good friends, but it's very hard to maintain relationships in such a competitive environment. Jennifer Capriati of America and Magdalena Maleva of Bulgaria. Maggie plays a blistering first set and wins it. Still, Maleva. But the world number one recovers and powers through to victory. I think that's the difference at this point that separates Maggie from, she's about top 15 now, that's what separates her from the top 10 or even, and that's why Jennifer's number one at the moment, she's winning those points. And at this level, um, again, it's one or two points that decided it. And I just think that physically at the end, Maggie was just, you know, that bit more tired. There's probably actually they haven't measured a 50% tax for me as well. <laughs> so from $45,000 I get 31. I bet you'd have come for It's 30, still okay. You? You I, still would, I would have yeah. come for five. Madeline was just struck down with that dreadful injury. And I admire her to come back after a couple of years out of the game and get back into the world's top 20. 
Oh, yeah, it's definitely. Phenomenal effort. Because I've been so, commentating a bit on, on uh, Maggie the past year since she's come back on the tour. She's played some very good matches, actually. But I can see the frustration that's in there. The and game's moved just, on. Yeah, just can't quite mm. do those, those top players. She's nearly there, but not quite. I also had a dream uh, when I was younger that I always wish that one day I would be able to play without injuries. My injuries were very, to an extent, very, very self-created because being injured would relieve some of the pressure. <laughs> uh, being injured was the best excuse not, um, not to have to be perfect. Maggie lost because for her to win means that she should play her best. You cannot win, nobody can win against Capriati or Davenport, the top three or four players, unless they play their best. Every point. They're all very soft-natured people. I think they're more like the, the father. Um, but they got all their drive and their ambition and everything from the mother. You see, she saw it as their way of escaping out of Bulgaria and, and, and living a better life. The other day, um, when I was watching Maggie's match against Capriati on the German television, the commentator uh, speaking about me, he used the word disciplinarian. I don't know if it is good or bad, but um, I, when I look back, I think it all comes down to discipline. With new aerial tablets, you don't have to settle for everyday whiteness because it always serves up championship whites. You've got to get your washing machine fixed. Yeah, I will. Championship whites from Aerial. That's another load off your mind. What's new, pussycat? What's new? The new Jaguar S-Type. Whatever happened to personal service? Ask a Morgan Stanley cardholder. Or call us about our cashback bonus award on 0800 9171222. The Morgan Stanley card. With us, it's personal. For me, Flash have brought out this new Flash Express, which makes cleaning up after little messes quick and easy. Pete, have you seen that mess in the kitchen? Flash Express does the hard work, so you don't have to. Oh, always having barbecues? Good news, the Asda Trolley Barbecue is only $19.96. Always low prices, that's Asda price. That's its leg. Can you see there? That's the hand. It's so beautiful. Amazing. So, are you looking forward to the big day? Yeah, very excited. Subject to the following terms and conditions. No pain, no stretch marks, no varicose veins. Returning to part-time work, buying house at 32 Petunia Crescent. Baby not inheriting father's nose. Because people everywhere have small print too, your local HSBC is offering a face-to-face -face discussion to help you plan for the future. The individual review from HSBC, the world's local bank. <laughs> Nothing 
is more comfortable than Charmin Comfort. It's the most cushiony soft toilet paper there is. Charmin. It may be a new year, but for WTA staff, it's business as usual. Serving the tennis aristocracy. Well done, do you mind some of those? Initially, when you come in, you're an outsider, and they don't know you. You know, you're coming into this virtual, like, traveling sorority, and you're trying to be a part of the bigger picture, and slowly but surely, you are accepted. And it's, um, and that's half the battle. Sorry. You know, respect is something that you spend a long time working on in this job to get the top airs respect. Sorry, Roger. Yes, oh, sorry, I left you. Sorry, Roger. Yes. Oh, sorry. Heat today, just first match, the heat, everything, just a bit, a bit of everything. Melissa, Serena Williams is coming right now, and Anna Kornikova at 6.15. She's okay, I'll let him know. Not, not confirmed. Yeah. Coming straight away, she's having second thoughts. Oh. Love it, we've announced. What are you doing? It's fine to be a superstar, but, but you know, tennis is their living and that's what they've made it from. And it's going to keep going, but they're not. And they're going to be forgotten very quickly. The new year hasn't broken Anna Kornikova's losing run, although she did take Serena Williams to three sets. Well, I'm definitely not on the top of my game right now. <laughs> You know, I've had a, a very long injury and I'm just trying to come back to my top form and uh, I'm sure it'll only get better because I'm only 20 years old. I don't have to worry about other people's opinions. I'm just here to play and that's it. Well, I think a lot of these players put themselves on the pedestal and they think they're untouchable. But you've also got to remember they are not bigger than the game. I vowed when she wins a tournament, I'll go to an interview. Until that, I refuse to go to one. And I could be very old by the time uh, she finally wins a tournament. The fact that she hasn't won a singles tournament is really an aberration more than anything else. The bottom line is she's one of the top 10 singles tennis players in the world. And she's one of the top two or three doubles players in the world. And you know, that's not bad. It's not as if she has no credentials. She's a marvelous, marvelous tennis player. No, no, listen. What? Just because you had such a good match against a top ten player. I know, I, I know, I know that. You played a good match out there today. The one question that you may get a lot, because in Auckland the crowds were record crowds, and I don't think you should maybe be that defensive of the fact you should be proud that you do attract people to tennis. It's not just the maybe crowds you think. No, 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 no. But, the, but at the same time, Anna, the. All the girls, I don't know if you hear it in press on us, but they say we, we have to thank Anna because of, yeah, she's... Right. No, 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 Anna, seriously, listen. I'm very lucky that I don't have a, a normal, boring nine-to-five job. You do sometimes wake up in the morning and think, God, I'm lucky to be doing what I'm doing. It's just like the good old days. It's really fast. I love your new watch and your bracelet. It really catches the light well. Thanks. Eris just come and told us it's her birthday today. She's very excited. She's the ripe old age of 20. Happy birthday. <laughs> what are your hopes and desires for this year, Hirona? Top 10 in tennis? Oh, she's in good. my private life? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Private life? Boyfriend? Not yet. Hope to get one. <laughs> but after my father, he doesn't want to get me one. <laughs> he, he will be not happy. Oh, oh here he is. He is. I'm, 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 I'm. <laughs> Martina Hingis has found love over the Christmas holidays. It's a special gift. Are things going well with him? Good, I'm happy for you. It's not, uh, not easy to find Martina, is it? No. So when you find it, hang on to it with both hands and don't let go. And what's the biggest sacrifice you've made in tennis? Uh, probably my personal life, absolutely. Um, relationships, it's very hard to, uh, to have, a, have a personal, uh, personal life. 
Um, so, but that's, you know, that's what you do. You know, I think as long as you're happy and, uh, you know, you still have fun, but yes, I mean, I'm single and, uh, you know, that's probably the, the one thing that I would say has been the, the greatest sacrifice. What about sex during tournaments? <laughs> It, it isn't very good. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I'm usually exhausted, so I don't feel like it. <laughs> but it's all right. No complaints. Maggie's one of the few players who travels not with a coach or a mother or a father, but a boyfriend. We are the center of attention, and we do expect that everything is going to be done for us. And the man is is always is a bit in the shadow, so I don't think it's very easy for him or for other people sometimes because they have to always depend on us. You look like a good-looking lady. No, it's. <laughs> <laughs> he has to somehow keep his personality and not be completely absorbed by me, which I tend to do sometimes. <laughs> Is it possible to have maybe a thousand dollars cash? There's no cash. No cash. No, no cash. Okay. Twenty-nine yes. percent tax. There's your tax. There are people who think that he's like I don't know a par parasite. But if I have to choose between a coach and Lubo, I don't think I can make that choice because. I don't want to be apart from Lubo for 30 weeks a year. When I was younger, I thought with every new year that there will be better results. I'll play even better. And when the year started, I really felt like something new is starting. Now I feel like there was never an end, and it's just the same old thing continuing. Um, you know, a lot of people maybe think it's a very glamorous life, but it's not. It's, you work hard, there are sacrifices, and probably the big one is missing out on, um, you know, even birthdays at home. Difficult, too, to have um, a potential other half in your life as well. That's, you need someone who's very understanding there, who will, um, who doesn't need to have you there 24 hours a day. So that's the other thing, because I can't ever imagine, you know, giving, you know, this life up for, for that, too. It's a case of wanting to have your cake and eat it, I think. <laughs> It's given me a chance to live a dream, which a lot of people don't have a chance to do, and that dream is, you know, to be part of an amazing life-giving sport. That's the worst game you played, Jade. Well, why, why, why play a, a really bad game like that? It's just like you're just rushing towards the end of uh, your failure of, of losing the match. The longer you stay on that court, the longer you learn. You're playing a, a top quality player. You should try and ask a few more questions from him. It gets a bit of annoying sometimes. It gets a bit annoying because he pushes me more than the other coaches because. He's my dad, and so he wants me to do better. But then I just get used to it. So. <laughs> we try and teach with Jade that it's obviously it's uh, it's very difficult. As as parents, we're very proud of of what Jade's done, and there's only a few things we wouldn't accept as parents, like like giving up um, in a match or or, or bad behaviour. And then as a coach, she knows there's, there's a lot of constructive criticism that will come from herself, and it doesn't mean that I don't love her or anything. But she knows that's good for her tennis. They were saying that they want Porsches and stuff, and like, oh, so if I win lots of money, then. I mean, we, we, we joke, we joke want. about it, but the most important thing is uh, the goal is to be the best you can be 
that's that's what what we're in it for is in is for her to win. Work it. Good. Good shot. That's better. That's what I was talking about. You know, and the teachers say like it um like joining in the game is more important than winning. I don't think that. I just think have to win. <laughs> the glib solution or analysis is that the parents are driving the kids into the sport. But you know that it isn't always a parent's fault. You know, very often the parents are just, you know, they've they've got, you know, they've got a tiger that they're holding by the tail and they're just kind of being dragged along for the ride and they feel like they've got to take care of their child. It would be unwise to underestimate the will and determination and ambition of even a four-year-old. Next week, Cutting Edge explores the powerful emotions of love. Details on the way. And so do Doctors Corday and Green, only they go about it a bit differently in tomorrow's ER at 9. Next on 4, find out who's up for eviction. From